All right, so here's a review for assessment number six. Let's go ahead and uh, go over these answers. So in question number one, a ball is thrown upwards from an initial height of nine feet, so that's why you see a nine right here. The table shows the height of the ball t seconds after it was thrown. Uh, the function that would best fit this quadratic is a quadratic function. So we are going to go ahead and go to Desmos and come up with a quadratic function for this. So here are the steps for that. Let's see. Here we go. So remember, you have to um, go to Desmos, press the plus key up in the top corner, and uh, press table. So I need uh, 0, 0 0.5, 1, and it kind of does it for me. I don't want the next one. All right, so up here I have 9, 18, 24, and 19. So, you know, I can't see those. I can see that one little green dot over there, but I don't see the rest. So I need to change my settings here. I want to go from um, 0 to, um, I guess, 2 is all we really need because those are my x values. Um, and my step size would say 1. Um, for the y's, I want to go from 0. My highest is 24, so I'll just say 30 over here. And also, how about by 5s? Okay, so now I can see my picture. There's not that many points. So I got four points, but a, defin a definite um, par parabola appearing, pretty much. All right, so let's go over here. Remember, we have to put y. We don't want the equal sign. We want that little squiggly line. So that is, where is that? Right there. And then I want a, x1. Oopsie, not xx. x1 and square it. Uh, plus bx plus c. And so this, oops, I forgot my 1 on the x. So I'll just put plus c, and you can tell that it's not working yet. Um, so I need to go back to this x right here, and I need to go ahead and put an x1 right there so it recognizes that it wants the, um, the table. All right. Oh, what happened here? What is wrong? Let me press this. Why may not be used? Oh, I forgot to put Y1. Silly me, there it is. All right, so again, I have to have this X1 and Y1 in there so that it like knows to use the numbers in the table. All right, so there's my numbers. Um, I have A is negative 14, B is 28.2, and C is 8.6. And my equation is AX squared plus BX plus C. So let's go back and uh, fill that in. So again, my a value, a value is negative 14, so y equals negative 14, x squared plus 28.2x plus 8.6. All right, so there's my equation of my parabola there. And um, let's go ahead and we'll look back. All right, my r squared was 0.97. All right, so that's something to note. And I forgot the other part of the question. So I'll put 0 0.97. That's very good. It's closer to 1, the better. And find the height of the ball when um, x is 2 seconds. So you could do one of two things. You could type this in your calculator. And for these x's right here and right here, you could use the number 2. Or you could kind of um, you could use your, your graph. You know, the reason you did this, so we can go along here and go till the x value is 2. So let's see. That is way over there. Oops, let me pull this over. So start there. Oh, I was on there, but now it won't let me. So let me start with that one. There it goes. So when you got a 2 right there, so 2 looks like, oh, I think up oh, to was nine. Okay, so there we go. So nine, nine um, looks like it's in feet. Okay, solve this using the quadratic function. Solve this quadratic function by factoring. So to factor, I have to have everything together on the left side. So I'm going to add 6x and add 6x. I'm going to take away 2, take away 2. That way the right side is a big 0. The left side is 2x squared plus 11x plus 14. All right, so in my problem, a is 2, b is 11, and c is 14. So my discriminant 
Oh, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be factoring, aren't I? Whoopsie do. All right, so I don't need all that. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and make my puzzle. 2 times 14 is 28, goes in the top, 11 goes down to the bottom. So I'm going to use 7 and 4 because that multiplies to a 28 and makes 11. All right, so x plus 7 and x plus 4, these both are going to be divided by 2. So that means my true factoring is 2x plus 7 and x plus 2 equals 0. All right, so my factors are 2x plus 7 and x plus 2. And so that means, remember, I have to get solutions. So this guy right here, I take 2x plus 7, set it equal to 0. I take away 7, divide by 2. That means my answer is negative 7 over 2. Here, I take x plus 2, set it equal to 0. Take away 2, that means my answer is negative 2. So my answers are negative 7 halves and also negative 2. All right, um, again, by factoring, so I'm going to have to minus 6x squared here. And this negative 25 has nobody to go with, so I'm just going to move him over to the end, and he's going to become a plus 25. So I have x squared minus 10x um, plus 25. Okay, so this one I think we can factor mm, what multiplies 25 and makes 10, because there's no number in the front. So 25 here, negative 10, I just need negative 5 twice. Okay, so I got x minus 5 x minus 5 and equals 0, and I'm done. So my answers are both 5. So my answer, 5. All right, number 4, square root method. So for square roots, I have to get the x squared all by itself. I have to isolate it, so i got to get rid of the 30. All right, so 4x squared equals negative 24 divided by 4. So negative 24 divided by 4 is negative 6, and I'm going to take the square root. All right, so it's square root of 6, I do not know, and I cannot break down, but I do put plus or minus, pull out the negative, and put an i, and put radical 6. All right, over here, number 5. So uh, remember, the zeros are x-intercepts, so that is um, negative 1. Those are my solutions, negative 1 and 2. This means the factors would be x plus 1 and x minus 2. All right, on number six, remember we learned that the discriminant tells you a lot about the problem. If the discriminant is less than zero, if the discriminant is less than zero, then I'm going to have um, no real solutions. If the discriminant is greater than zero, I'm going to have two real solutions. And if the discriminant is equal to zero, I have one real solution. So let's see what happens. So remember, I have my A, B, and C here. So I have negative seven squared minus four times A and c is 4. So that comes out to 49 minus 12 times 4. 49 minus 36. So that is 13 positive, so two real solutions. All right, down here, I got negative 12, so b squared minus 4 times a is 4, and c is 9. Well, when you do this, you get 144 minus 16 times 9 is also 144, so you get big fat zero, so that means one real solution. And finally, down here, b is 3, so 3 squared minus 4 times 1 is a and c is 7, because that's a 1 right there. All right, so I get 9 minus 28, so I get negative 19, so that means there is zero real solutions. So these are the number of x-intercepts also. All right, over here, we're going to be using the quadratic formula. So it's all set up for me. i got 3, negative 4, and 6. My discriminant is negative 4 squared minus 4 times a is 3, and c is 6. Good oak. So 16 minus 12 times 6. It's going to be negative 56. So I have... Um, negative b, so I got 4 plus or minus square root of negative 56 all over 2 times 3, which is 6. All right, so 56, let's break that down. So 56 definitely divides by 2 because it is an even number. So 28 is 4 times 7 and then 2 times 2. So I have a pair of 2's I'm going to bring out, so why don't I just, uh, you know, this 2 and that 2. And then I have a 2 and a 7 left over inside, so I got 4 plus or minus 2i, radical 14, 
all over 6. So you know that uh, these three numbers here all divide by 2, so let's do it. So 2 plus or minus i radical 14 over 3. All right, so over here, a is 1, b is negative 2, c is negative 6. My discriminant, negative 2 squared minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 6. So I got 4 basically plus 24, so 28. All right, so I have um, 2 plus or minus the square root of 28 all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Well, 28 breaks down into 4 times 7, which is 2 and 2. So I have 2 plus or minus 2 radical 7 all over 2. So all these 2's reduced to 1's, so I have 1 plus or minus radical 7 over 1, so really just leave it like that. Okay, number 9, an old problem, finding the inverse. So uh, remember this is y equals, so I make it into x equals 2x plus, oops, that would be 2y. I switch the x and the y, so 2y plus 8. Um, solve for y, so take away 8. So I get x minus 8 equals 2y. Divide everything by 2. So I get 1 half x minus 4 equals y. So my inverse is 1 half x minus 4. So it's an old problem. Over here, another old problem. Um, i got to add 5 to clean this up. So 2 with x plus 4 in the bars equals 22. You have to divide by 2. So I have x plus 4 equals 11. So I have x plus 4 is 11, or x plus 4 is negative 11. So when I solve these, I get x equals to 7. And over here, take away 4, I get x equals to negative 15. All right, and these last problems, remember, you can pretty much put these in the calculator as well, but I'll show you how to do them out here. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 5i is 15i. Inside here, I get negative 8i. And then the last part is negative 20i squared. All right, so right away, I have the 6. 15 minus 8, 15i minus 8i is positive 7i. But this negative 20, remember, i squared is negative 1. So that's actually a positive 20. So 20 and the 6 make a 26, and then plus 7i. All right, here I just got to distribute. So I get negative 14i, and then negative 28i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1, so that's negative 14i plus 28, because i squared is negative 1, so it multiplies by the negative 28. And here, i to the 39th, this is one of those ones on the calculator where you press the math button, and then you go to um, i part. And you, you, know, you, pl you plug that into there. So this comes out to negative i when you do that. All right, addition and subtraction over here. So I get negative 5 minus 2i. Just coming out of the parentheses, there's nothing in front of the parentheses, so nothing changes. But this negative here, it applies to both of these parts right here. It's going to get given to both. So it turns into negative 6, and minus a minus 3i is plus 3i. And just combine like terms. Um, let's see. Negative 5 goes with negative 6, that makes negative 11. And then negative 2i plus 3i is positive 1i. All right, down here I got 4i minus 6, and then minus a plus, so that's minus 5i. So I have negative 6, and then 4i minus 5i is negative i.